Welcome to the report for Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do an interesting report tonight on conspiracy theories and paranoid schizophrenia. Stick around and listen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're recording some uh, controversial reports that are somewhat even self-critical, ladies and gentlemen, because here at the report for Tiger Mountain, as you well know, <clears throat> we love a good conspiracy. So I'm somebody who certainly would probably be considered, at least in part, a conspiracy theorist. But I wanted to talk about, you know, when do conspiracy theories go too far? When do they cross over into, I guess, what you could call paranoid schizophrenia? You know what I mean? And, you know, I think there is a bit of a thin line there, ladies and gentlemen. You know, um, you know obviously I do love a good conspiracy when it makes sense, when it's something that's plausible. But then, you know, you have something like, say, I don't know, the Flat Earth, which is clearly a nonsense. Um, so, you know, when does it cross over from a conspiracy theory that has legs, like, say, the JFK assassination, that there was something suspicious going on with 9-11, that there was something suspicious going on with the Donald Trump recent shooting, and into paranoid schizophrenia? Well, you know, there's a thin line. Um, you know, for example, some people, uh, apropos the recent uh, Donald Trump shooting, some people think that Donald Trump was in on it, that it was ketchup that he just put on his ear, that no one was really hurt, that it was fake, it was all staged to boost Trump's popularity. That, for example, to me, is crossing over into the world of paranoid schizophrenia. Um, you know, and so, you know, like, and it's, it is a problem because it's almost like people who suffer from paranoid schizophrenia are open to conspiracy theories a lot more. People maybe who are autistic, people maybe who, uh, even if they're slightly on the spectrum or something, people with that are slightly more open to this way of thinking. And it's not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that, um, but it's like you need to have a critical faculty and you need to realize when a, when a conspiracy theory has gone too far. For example, uh, over 9-11, for example, I do believe that there's something suspicious going on. But some people think that, you know, that the planes were holograms. This is another crazy thing. They think they're fucking holograms. And that there's CGI involved. You know, I mean, that's obviously a nonsense. I mean, half of New York, who were in town that day, saw it with their own eyes, the buildings collapsing or the planes flying in. I mean, there's no fucking holograms. You know, um, you know, I agree that maybe there was controlled demolition, you know, and if you look into it, there was this Israeli group uh, art students who were hiding out in, in inside the, uh, you know, um, uh, World Trade Center for like three to six months before performing an art project, which is probably like laying the demolition charges. I mean, there's all kinds of suspicious things that seem like they could have legs. There was the dancing Israelis. That seems like it could have legs, like they had some kind of foreknowledge of the attack. There's other things, you know, ridiculous things like, you know, the passport of one of the, uh, you know, one of the um, assassins landed and it was meant to come out from somebody who was on the plane. That's clearly a nonsense. So, you know, you, but you need to have some kind of level of critical faculty. And, um, you know, it, it can be said to that, you know, say someone like David Icke. David Icke, if you listen to him, has a lot of good ideas. Same with Alex Jones. But occasionally they both seem to go off almost into sort of a territory that's a little too crazy. And, you know, you've got to remember that one of the strategies of the CIA is disinformation. And the sense that you tell the truth, you know, say so you've got the truth here or whatever, and then you mix in enough disinformation so that the truth becomes blurred with the bullshit. And I think that is a problem for the conspiracy community. And I think, you know, part of the agents or the, there is active, you know, um, dissemination of disinformation, which I think, for example, the Flat Earth Movement, you know, for example, something like the NASA moon landing, you know, I mean, I'm a little bit 50-50 on that. Like, I, I, I've listened to many people who think we didn't land on the moon, and there's maybe some legs to it, but then there's another part of me that you know, thinks of all the thousands of engineers and the millions of people who worked on it, um, getting people to the moon and it's the you know you have to think about the level of you know that there was 10,000 people working on the moon project and they all had to be in on it they all had to lie um, of course you have some people who claim to have worked on it who do claim that it was fake I really don't know I mean something like that the, the moon landing it almost sits in the middle like it is it is possible that it was fake but in my opinion it's highly unlikely so you know you just you know and you know, I don't even mean to insult people who do believe some of the more outlandish, um, uh, you know, conspiracy theories like Flat Earth or whatever. Maybe, it's, you know, and, and I know some people who do believe in a Flat Earth. A couple of them are friends of mine on Facebook. And I make fun of them a little bit, but I don't do it in a mean way. I Maybe mean, I may do it in a cheeky way, but I don't do it in a mean way. But I just think, you know, 
the, the conspiracy community, which I consider myself a part of, just has to have, you know, its own um, faculty. And this also goes for the, the vaccine movement, you know, um, you know, sometimes there are vaccines that have been around long enough that they are safe. So, you know, I'm not opposed to every single vaccine if it's had a, a long history of safety. Um, but yet there are other vaccines like the COVID, the, particularly the Pfizer and the Moderna, that's the RNA one, that seem deeply suspicious to me. Um, you know, so, you know, I just think we need to maintain our critical faculty and I wanted to raise that because it's something you need to think about. You know, and I think that it's great to have strong opinions, it's great to have provocative opinions, but you have to subject your own opinions to critical analysis uh, and not, you know, totally skits out. Um, you know, another one is the chemtrails thing. I mean, I think, you know, there probably is something to that uh, and that, you know, recently they've come out in media and said that, you know, they are involved in geoengineering, which is chemtrails, right? But like, you know, so there are some people I've noticed on, on, on Facebook or whatever, or on Instagram, whose who pages I've liked, and they look up at the, 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 the um, clouds every day and they see, oh, they've been spraying again, or harp, or, you know, and it's just, and you can see that they've crossed over into a point where they see everything uh, as being a conspiracy. And that itself is dangerous because when you see, when you think that everything is a conspiracy, when you think that, you know, there is no real opposition, <coughs> it becomes dangerous when Donald Trump and Putin, they're all in on it together with Z and the CIA and Mossad and, you know, I mean, if everybody is in on it, how can you possibly oppose any of it? In itself, the conspiracy, the grand conspiracy itself becomes like a conspiracy because it becomes like a monolithic uh, worldview that can't ever be opposed because everyone is always working on it. Everyone is always in on it. So I think that's bullshit and I just think we need to subject our own ideas to critical thinking. And that's all I wanted to say today on the report from Dougie Mountain.